Hello everyone, my name is Blair Self, I am the creative director at Octothorpic, and I'm here to read the first section of Invitation to the Party on the Moon, the upcoming short story that I'm writing. It started when a window in our studio apartment opened, and a sparkling envelope floated through it. The envelope made a few loops in the air before gracefully landing on our kitchen counter. I was sitting on a fold-out chair watching my roommate Callie paint, and the motion drew my attention. You just saw that, right? I asked. Out of the corner of my eye, yeah, Callie said, intentionally not looking away from the mirror she was using as a canvas. Her auburn hair was pulled up into a bun, and her loose, comfortable clothes had been splattered with paint. She was looking intently back into her own green eyes, her pale face scrunched up into a marginally dissatisfied gaze. What are the chances it's filled with anthrax? I said, smiling. Nobody's going to send us anthrax! I said that as a joke once, and you have yet to let me off the hook for it. The window just opened on its own, you don't think that's suspicious? To that, she shrugged. There was a brief pause in the conversation as she kept working on her painting, and I alternated between looking at her and the envelope. You're gonna make me pick it up. Most definitely. Sighing, I stood up and, stepping around the plastic tarp protecting our hardwood floors from Callie's work, walked the short distance between what counted as our living room to the kitchen. Looking down, I saw the white envelope resting on the faux granite counter. It had flipped itself to be face up, so I could clearly see the words invitation crudely written in sparkly silver ink. As I picked the letter up, glitter followed its path, giving it a sort of shimmery afterimage. It was a little gaudy, to be honest. What does it say? Callie impatiently inquired. You rascal, I mused, turning the envelope around and picking at the seam, acting like you were so focused on your work that I'd have to get up and open the envelope. It's an invitation to something, so it's probably for you, but there's no return address or name on it. I paused halfway through the seal. Is it okay if I open this and it ends up being yours? Oh my god, Callie said, trying to suppress a giggle with her unladen hand. What? It's illegal in these here United States of America for someone to open another person's mail. Callie started to laugh a sort of hissing giggle. We're in the same room. Smiling, I exaggeratingly responded. Well, I just don't feel comfortable opening a letter such as this without the full consent of all parties it may or may not be intended for. Snorting, Callie said, so you going to ask the other people on this floor if they're okay with you opening it? There was a brief pause in the conversation. No, I replied, I'm too lazy to take the bit that far. At that, Callie lost it, breaking into a full laughing fit. While she recovered, I finished opening the envelope. Inside was a small rectangular piece of cardstock. On the card, there was an abstract series of pastel pink, blue, and sea green lines that roughly looped into a hexagonal shape. Within the beautiful border, there was a dark gray text that was written in the same crude font as the front of the envelope. I read what it said aloud. Congratulations, Rowan Parks. Startled, I looked up at Callie, who finally looked away from her painting to stare, green eyes wide, at the letter. So, she said, whoever sent this is someone who both knows your address and your preferred name. That knows the field a bit. Yeah, I said, reading further into the letter. Congratulations, Rowan Parks. You, and a plus one, have been invited to the party that never ends. We're in the Copernicus crater on your planet's largest orbiting body, the moon. So expect two days of travel, plus how long you decide to stay. Wear whatever you're comfortable with. We want to get to know you. Write on the back of this letter as legibly as possible, if and when you'd like to be picked up. We can send transportation to your residence as early as two days after you send the letter. Thank you. There was a brief silence as we processed the information. My mind was racing, questioning the implausibility of the request. A never-ending party located on the moon? How would that even be possible? Who would set that kind of thing up, and why would they invite me? Callie started laughing, breaking the silence and the growing pain in my stomach. I breathed a sigh of relief. So stupid, Callie said between satisfying laughs. <laughs> you all right? I chuckled, Callie's wheezing starting to get the better of me. Callie slowly recovered her composure, aftershocks of laughter hating every once in a while. 100%, Callie said, smiling. She started to put away her painting tools, putting her brushes in a bucket of muddy-colored water to soak. This has got to be Sam's doing, right? Some elaborate prank of his. 
He's gone pretty far this time, then. He made a whole font just for this letter. Hmm? I thought it was poor handwriting. No, look. I walked over to her, presenting the letter. If you look at the letters carefully, you'll see that they're actually the same. All the E's look like the same exact weird spiral. Interesting. Do you think you can manage that? Probably. There's easy font-making software all over the place online. It's just so much more effort than we're used to. And think about all the other weird stuff that's happened. The weird sparkling after images, the window opening on its own. How would he set that stuff up? Then clearly we've just been invited to a party on the moon. Yeah, obviously. I rolled my eyes. I just think that if this is one of his pranks, it's a really good one. Callie was putting her paints away, scraping what she didn't use from her pilot back into the cans before setting them back up. You know what that means, don't you? I raised an eyebrow. Callie looked at me, a mischievous grin playing across her face. We've got to go through with it. What? Why? I said, voice more defensive than I'd wanted. Clearly we'll never know how he did all this crazy tomfoolery unless we spring his trap. And all we stand to lose is our dignity. I know you're totally willing to pay that price, but that's all I have at the moment. At that, Callie snorted, suppressing further laughter. Come on, you've got a backlog of content on your blog, right? I do have an actual job too, you know. We don't think we'll actually be gone two days, right? Callie shrugged. We don't know what Sam would have in store for us. Maybe the repetition of the two-day travel thing is supposed to hammer home that we really should give him two days to see the whole thing through. I have Monday off, so if we leave when I get back from work on Friday, we'll be able to do whatever Sam plans for us and have some time to decompress. Wait, don't you have to make a gallery appearance on Friday? I can push that back. Or, what is it more on-brand for me than to not show up at my own gallery? I'm so jealous of you and your stupid accomplishments and improbable success which keeps us afloat in our expensive city apartment. Love you too. So it's decided. Callie posed dramatically, pointing up and out the window. We're going to the moon. Sure, I said, already starting to write down the information for our pickup on the back of the card. How are we going to mail this? It didn't come with a return address that the postal service can access. Defenestrate it. I scoffed, putting the last touches on my message. That's a two dollar word. Please, at most it's one fifty. What did you write? Nothing fancy, I said, before looking down at my note and reading it aloud, exaggerating my voice to sound as dramatic as possible. Thank you very much for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I humbly accept your invitation and plan on bringing a plus one with me. I don't know what kind of food you have, since I presume it to be alien in nature, but we would appreciate vegan options, no meat or other product originating from an animal. We would like to be picked up this upcoming Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Sincerely, Rowan Parks. Sam knows we're vegan, Callie said. Well, yeah, I said, but we don't know for certain if it's Sam. It could be someone else we know, like Lisa or Kyle, and it always helps to remind people. I cut my rambling speech short when I noticed Callie's mischievous smile. Oh, shut up, I said, feeling my face get warm. It's cute that you care about your morals, really, Callie mocked, plucking the letter out of my hand. She nonchalantly threw it out the window. It fluttered against the wind before falling down out of sight. That's a little anticlimactic, Callie said. Well, what do you expect? It's only just a piece of paper. It's not like, <laughs> Callie said, animatedly pointing out the window. When I followed her gaze, I saw the paper soaring up into the sky, glittering after images following suit. Callie and I quickly shoved our way to the window and, poking our heads out into the smoggy air, we could see the letter disappear up into the clear blue sky. That's inexplicable, Callie said, awestruck. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll enjoy Invitation to the Party on the Moon in full when it comes out December 30th.